Hello, folks. Ooh, hiccup. Welcome back for I'm the one, the only I am Hobo Tom. What is this in my hand? This is my glass of red wine. Where is a red wine and pizza Friday? Cheers, folks. Ah, some good stuff. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown, but before I get into the wrestling, first of all, as always, my shout out video thank yous. Lampaggio! Thank you very much. Um, I think we were talking about the show a little bit. Show is uh, a little bit of a spoiler alert. The show is meh. But I'll tell you what AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. Good stuff. So, Nampaggio, you, sir, have earned that six count. Let's see, let's start for the show. Michael Cole announces there has been 1,100 SmackDowns. Impressive. When I get to that number, trust me, you two shall know. I think um, in the 600s now, maybe if I survive for three years, that would be impressive. Maybe I might get that, that high. I forget. I think I have like. I do think I have like an X. I know it's excess of 500. I just forget exactly how many though. I'll have to count one day. That's okay. That's neither here nor there. Let's talk about some SmackDown wrestling. And again, just like I stated before, with the exception. It was actually a fairly decent show. The thing that killed SmackDown was not the wrestling. No, the wrestling was actually good. It's the promos. It's all the junk in between that makes me go to my glass of red wine and say, gee, I wonder if this is going to make it feel any better. 
No, not that much. But that's okay. Let's talk about some SmackDown wrestling. It starts off with the Dirt Sheet or Miz TV. I forget what it's called. I think I got home a little bit late from the gym. A few minutes I missed the intro. You know who's involved. The Miz and John Morrison. They, t- they talk about stuff in their suits. They make fun of Otis. Otis comes back at them. Oh, Otis. Kill, Otis. Kill, kill, kill. Otis goes after um, Miz and both Morrison. Um, Tucker Knight's out there to help him a little bit. Not only does does Otis hit the Caterpillar on Miz, he also hit the Vader bomb. Kill, kill, Otis, kill. So that's good. And uh, then we go to commercial break. Then we have our first match of the evening. Match numero uno. And I say that because it was Gran Metalik taking on Cesaro. And there are rumors. Lindsay Dorado might unmask himself. That'd be like El Vagabundo, Hijo del Hobo, Cinque Vito. I don't even know a word in Spanish. That's okay. I'd be like him removing his mask in front of everyone. Oh, wow. Or they break up Lucha House Party after Night of Champions. He goes and works with El Fantasma and is part of, um, oh, I forget what it's called. It's, uh, Whatever his Lucha Cartel. The, the Lucha Cartel. That would be interesting. But again, we'll hold off on that. So right now we have Grand Metal League taking on Cesaro. Actually a pretty good match. It's so hard to say Cesaro has bad matches. And Grand Metal League makes it entertaining though. Uh, Cesaro is too strong. But once Grand Metal League starts doing his flippy flying stuff. Oh, the, the Lucha style of wrestling, it's fast-paced, non-stop. The only thing is, as a fan, it doesn't let you catch your breath. You're like, oh, oh, oh. And the thing is, if you see it over and over and over again, like they, oh, that's right, I think it's Sunday or Saturday on Univision. They have CMLL. I'll have to check it out again. So we'll see. Or at least I will see. That'd be cool if I could. Should I add another wrestling show? You, the YouTube audience, you let me know. Because I will show you clips of CMLL. If you truly want to see it. I'll leave that up to you. I mean, I could just do it quickly, too. I have to figure out when it comes on. I have to iron out de- details. But that's okay. Cesaro is too strong for Grand Malik. Grand Malik can fly. Lucha Hearts Party, though. You're out of here. I don't even know what they did. Which is not good, because I know that devious Shinsuke Nakamura had something to do with it. Um, Grand Malik, he tries to fly, but you know what? Not happening. Um, Cesaro, again, when he slowed the pace down to his pace of match, those European uppercuts oh, are so amazing by Cesaro. Um, Grand Metal League does the, the top post. Not the top rope. No, no, no. No, you have the rope. Then you have the post. He was up here. The top post. Huracarana. While Cesaro was on the second rope. I will never fault any wrestler that can do that. That was amazing. Um, Cesaro, again. It's come back, hits the gotcha neutralizer. Cesaro is just too strong for Grand Metal League, and that makes sense. Um, a lot of people have said Pon for Pon Cesaro is one of the strongest wrestlers in the WWE. Cesaro wins. Gotcha neutralizer has absolutely no effect what's going to happen at the Gold Rush Clash of Champions. Or Clash of Champions, Gold Rush, whatever, in a week from Sunday. That's the 27th. And the 4th. What am I doing the 4th? 
It's going to be a takeover event. I don't know. Does that mean October? I have no idea what pay-per-view is going to be in October. WWE screwed up their whole entire pay-per-view schedule, but I don't care. Cesaro won. Solid cheeseburger match. And we have Jey Uso having an interview. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens during the Simone Street Fight. Considering AEW just put on one of the best street fights ever, and that's what any street fight should be. Um, then we have Matt Riddell, the many bros. What's the bro for, like, being with underage girls? I'm just saying what I've heard. Oh, yeah, what's what what's the bro for, like, not listening to, to, to the words no? Yeah, so, Matt Riddell's, like, his push is, like, pff, gone. You're, you're, you're reduced to popcorn match status. And uh, then we have Alexa Bliss with a moment of bliss. Nikki Cross is there. Pretty good stuff. Uh, Alexa does ask some hard questions. Look, um, Nikki Cross for her worth actually answers them. Then Lacey Evans comes out and this leads to our next match. Nikki Cross versus Lacey Evans. Um, Lacey Evans goes out of the ring. That old heel delay tactic like, no, no, no. I'm going to wrestle when I feel like wrestling. Uh, Nikki Cross goes to the se second row with a cross body. I wonder if she knows, like, that top row is pretty tall for, for poor Nikki Cross. Uh, Lacey then works over Nikki's arms, a uh, series of moves, arm stomp, kind of trying to pull the arm out of the socket. Um, and she had a wrecking ball Bronco Buster. That was actually pretty good. I'll tell you what. Lacey Evans... When she sticks with what she can do, is really good. When she tries to go outside of her comfort zone, and you can actually see her do that, she's not so good. So again, it's it's one of those things. Lacey Evans is gonna, I feel, kind of have pigeonholed herself into this is what I'm good at. This is what I should do. Because once she goes out of that area. Oh, no, no bueno, folks. Not, not very good. But again, in that very small, tightly confined space, this is what I can do. This is what I'm comfortable with. This is what we're going to work on in the match. She's actually not bad. The thing is, she just has to open up her repertoire a little bit. She has, and I don't know how you do it. You have to become comfortable with doing things. Um... Again, if you're in the whole mindset, I'm not good at this. I'm gonna, I'm, I might actually hurt her. Kind of have to put that to the side. Try it. Worst comes to worst, you apologize later. You bring Nikki Cross. Nikki, here's a bottle of rose wine. You can just, well, not rose, but I have my red wine. I am so sorry. I'm just trying to try new stuff. Thank you for working with me. I don't. And I'm sure Nikki Cross has a personality. And she's been in the business long enough to say, okay, thank you. Um, then Nikki, uh, Lacey Evans goes outside with a hand sanitizer. Not only does she, she, she doesn't have the little personal thing. Like, I think it's, you can see it kind of over there. I, I, I stole mine from work. But she has the big industrial size thing of hand sanitizer. It makes her drink it. That pisses Nikki Cross off. It's not the coffee that she desires. Um, goes on her offense. Hits a um, tornado DDT from the second row. Then the draping, twisting neckbreaker to finish off Lacey Evans. Nikki Cross wins. Again, this match focused on both the strengths of Lacey Evans while taking away from her weaknesses. And it focused a little bit more on Nikki Cross. This was actually good. It's a solid cheeseburger match. And then Lacey Evans. I forget what she called Alexa Bliss, but it was funny. 
she's upset that she lost. She she called Michael Cole four eyes. She she called Alexa Bliss some some, some goth b word. I think I don't know if I forget that, but whatever it was, Michael Cole was called four eyes. Um, Lacey Evans told Alexa, "Go get the fiend." No, no, no. Do not use that word around Alexa. Lacey Evans, you get Sister Abigail. And I'll tell you what, Alexa Bliss does a sister, does the Sister Abigail almost better than Bray Wyatt. Indeed. And um, there's a Heyman promo about the Noy family. The Sasha interview, Bailey jumps her, um, tries to wreck Sasha's life, and just curses throughout it. I don't know. I'm kind of still waiting for that Bailey sex tape. But you did not hear me say that, though. Then, oh, this is what this show needed. Because all the interviews, they, they were very bland, blasé. You expected something to happen. Again, when Sasha Banks was there in the neck brace, you're like, what was Bailey going to show up and just wreck her life? Because um, we all know Sasha Banks is on the Mandalorian. Sasha Banks, a Jedi? Not after tonight. No, no, no. But the next match, oh. This was something out of Chikara, out of the prime years of Chikara. Oh, thank you, WWE. For you have heard us. And you have heard our demands. We want good wrestlers having good matches. We want to see those dream matches. Almost there. It was AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn. Only way this could have been a dream match is if Sami Zayn came out as El Generico. Hard to fault WWE for not doing that. Um, Sami Zayn it starts off, AJ Styles is upset because Sami Zayn <laughs> says he is the um, Intercontinental Champion. AJ Styles is sick of him. He's sick of AJ, he's heel AJ, he's New Japan AJ. He goes right after Sami Zayn, bounces it off the table. Uh, back in the ring, the GTS neck breaker. That suplex into a neck break. Um, the um, kind of fireman neck breaker combo GTS neck breaker. So good. AJ has such a crisp move set. It's so on point. It's so on target. It's so focused. Uh, Sami Zayn, he can sell anything. He knows how to do stuff. Um, AJ Styles then also hits a phenomenal forearm onto the floor again. Chikara. Um, AJ Styles then hits back in the ring. AJ Styles is a suplex neck breaker. Sami Zayn makes a little bit of a comeback with a job breaker. Um, then they have an exchange of blows where AJ gets the better of it with a Pele kick. AJ Styles as a Rule should always beat Sami Zayn with like an exception or two. It should always be AJ Styles winning though, because um, although hey, I'm not saying Sami Zayn shouldn't get any. Uh, I'm not saying it should be a squash match. This is exactly the way it should have been. Again, AJ Styles versus an El Generico. That could have been better. I have to give it a little bit more time. Oh, this match could have been truly amazing. Could have equaled the um, parking lot brawl we saw on AEW. But again, it was close. Not there, but really close, though. Uh, let's see here. Then Zane with a blue thunder bomb, a turnbuckle exploder. AJ Styles went for the calf pressure, didn't hit that, though. Then <laughs> there was a AJ Styles. I'm, I'm sorry, Sami Zayn tried to roll up AJ Styles. He grabbed a fistful of trunks. And the way the ref, ref Jess was positioned, she saw it, she's like, no, Sami Zayn, you cannot grab the trunks. When AJ Styles rolled up Sami Zayn, the camera angle was there and the referee was positioned. I honestly don't know if AJ Styles grabbed the trunks or not. He could have, but AJ Styles is such the wily veteran. He knows how to do it, how not to make it truly obvious. It seemed like a surprise roll-up. A good surprise roll-up for a change after Sami Zayn was arguing with the referee. AJ Styles could have cheated. We'll never know, though. There's AJ Styles, when he does something questionable, again, this goes into his style of wrestling, the way he's always done things. 
when he does that questionable thing, it always leaves you that much room of doubt where you're like, did he really or didn't he? And you don't know. And it says, I want to see more. So AJ Styles wins. This was a surf and turf match. And then Jeff Hardy's fed up with both of them. Jeff Hardy declares a triple threat ladder match for Clash of Champions. I don't know who's going to win that. But that, folks, I don't care what El Vagabundo Hobo Dos Ejo Vente Cinco says, or even if it's Dr. Tom says, that's going to be Hobo Tom's match of the night. Uh, then we have an Otis and Tucker. Otis has been served. He's like, oh, they're serving you lunch? Buffet? Lobster? No, you got to serve with legal notices. So, yeah. Welcome to the real world. You fat bastard. Um, let's see here. Then there was the little thing with Seamus and Big E and, and security guard who Big E called Larry. Yeah, poor Larry eats eats the windshield. That was good, though. Um, then we have our main event. And semi-disappointing. But I'll get to that. It was, it was, it was good and bad in and, and, and two respects, and I'll get to it. We have Roman Reigns and Jey Uso taking on Sheamus and Mary Corbin. Starts off as a brawl. And Roman Reigns comes out first with Paul Heyman. Uh, then his partner, Jey Uso. Jey Uso is way too happy to be there. Baron Corbin comes out, of course, on his dais. Uh, Sheamus is already in the ring. Sheamus got the jobber entrance. Um, then it starts off as a brawl. Uh, Jey Uso got deep sixth. Uh, Reigns then just, like, he to chair. He won one of the nice office chairs. Not, 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 not even a, a dopey office chair like this, but like a real nice office. Ooh, that is kind of nice. This is kind of heavy. But he heaved like one of those nice office chairs. When did I actually get one of those? But yeah, I can only afford... Oh, that's getting a little hard where my butt is. It's a little bit soft. It has a little stretch to it. Back's actually nice. I, I do like the fact that the pneumatics works pretty good. So I'm happy with that. Happy with my office chairs. The bungee cord chair is getting... It's well-worn. Um, so he's a chair <laughs> into to Baron Corbin. That was great. Um, and then back in the ring, uh, Baron Corbin then threw a chair. Actually, on the, back on the outside, Baron Corbin kind of like very lightly and gently tossed a chair towards Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns allowed that chair to hit him back in the ring. Back in the ring. Roman Reigns for the chairs, and he takes that chair to the back of Baron Corbin. That's good. Uh, and, and so many... Dude, why are there so many kendo sticks underneath the ring? Like, they lift up the ring, they're just like... I saw at least six kendo sticks. And that was just on one side of the ring. Like, if you're going to have weapons there, why just blatantly hide them? I don't know, just come out with it like Sandman used to. That was during the whole Singapore cane thing. And then it kind of got old. Then everyone had a kendo stick. No, save the kendo sticks for a big no holds barred event and just have them come down with it. Or have like a partner bring it out or something. Don't hide them underneath the ring. Or if, you're, or if you are going to hide it under the ring, make it a lot less obvious. Um, then Sheamus hit a big knee. Uh, Jay Uso goes through a table, but only gets a two. Sweet count. Uh, Roman Reigns low blows. <laughs> that was the best thing. Uh, Sheamus, while standing on the desk, and then um, Simone drops him onto the desk. I forgot the desk sold or not. I think the desk no, the desk no sold. Uh, Sheamus gets speared through the barricade. In the end of the match, we saw a spear and a splash. Roman Reigns and Jey Uso wins. A ham sandwich of a match. The thing that gets me is that after the match, Jey Uso did use the belt to clock um, what's his face in the head with it, and that set up the spear and the splash. 
Roman Reigns broke character a little bit. He was really happy to work with his cousin, Jay Uso. But then all of a sudden, once Paul Heyman got in the ring and he realized that his cousin had his belt, he had mean face on. Like, he should have mean face on throughout the entire thing, not break kayfabe just because he and his cousin won. Because he seemed way too, not way too happy. He seemed legitimately happy that he could share this moment with one of his cousins, with a family member. But then it came back as like, oh, I'm at work. I shouldn't be happy. So Roman Reigns, I think, I might be going on a stretch on this. Roman Reigns is still kind of learning. He's in that weird learning process of, okay, I have to learn to be a heel. I can't be all smiling and happy when I win with a cousin, especially when my cousin used my belt to help us gain the victory. So that's the that's my biggest critique on this match. And if you're going to have a street fight, you have to take it out. It has to be at least in the locker room. It has to be by catering. It should be in a parking lot. On those aspects, meh. It was just an Extreme Rules match. That's, it was an Extreme Rules tag team match. That's what they should have built it as, not a Simone Street fight. You have a Simone Street fight, you have to have it here in Daytona Beach. You have to poke someone in the neck with a syringe that you found on the beach, uh, cut someone's head open using an aluminum can, and use God knows what else garbage is out there lying on the beach from these filthy, disgusting people that just use Daytona Beach as their dumping ground. Oh, um, I'm, I'm sorry for venting. Um, but that was SmackDown. Overall, I can't, I can't say that it was bad. It wasn't great. It was good. It was a cheeseburger of a show. And it's Friday, baby! That means I'm off Saturday and Sunday. I'm next week's schedule. It's, it's actually a full week. Monday is going to be, I don't know. I'll figure out. It all depends what I feel like doing with CMLL. I have to figure out the times, too. Uh, Monday is definitely going to be Monday Night Raw. Tuesday is, of course, my live stream with Impact. Wednesday, AEW. Thursday is going to be so someone's predictions.